In this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to Taylor Valley which is one of the dry valleys found in the Trans-Antarctic mountain range. So Antarctica isn't owned by anybody although there are territorial claims. So through the Antarctic Treaty New Zealand made a claim and New Zealand claim is this sort of pizza slice of Antarctica here. By all means, pause this um, wee video and read some of the information either side. I'm going to really home in on the main points. So here you can see the Trans-Antarctic Mountain Range. We can see the Ross Sea and see the extent of the ice shelf here. And we can see that these mountains basically separate West Antarctica from East Antarctica. So in this slide I've opened up Google Earth um, so we can have a look at um, where the dry valleys are. If you're to fly from Christchurch to Ross Island, that's a distance of some 3,832 kilometres. And if you were travelling by Hercules aircraft, that would take you something in the region of 8 hours. So I'm going to attempt to zoom in to Ross Island. So here we are. We can see Mount Erebus here, the stratovolcano. Scott Base is located about here. And these are part of the Trans-Antarctic Trans Mountain Range. Taylor Valley being located just here and the visitor site somewhere in this region as well and you can zoom in and have a good look in Taylor Valley picking out some features and also finding the visitor site. So Taylor Valley was actually discovered by Captain Scott in 1903. He was on the high plateau and he and his two colleagues were in um, pretty unfavourable conditions. So to escape those conditions they decided to follow the Taylor Glacier down to what they thought was going to be the ocean, back to the sea, where the climate would be that little bit better, better weather conditions there. Instead they followed the glacier down and arrived in the Taylor Valley, an incredibly unusual environment. And it's unusual because it's largely snow and ice free. So this is where Scott accidentally ended up. So I'm just going to point out some of the environmental conditions of Taylor Valley. They're known as the dry valleys because the atmosphere in Taylor Valley is particularly dry, as it is for the rest of Antarctica. Very cold and very dry air. But it's also known as the dry valley because there's not much in the way of snow or ice cover. So the dry valleys are a place where rock is actually exposed in Antarctica rather than covered by kilometres um, of ice. So we can see rock, soil and sand in the dry valleys. The average annual air temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius, but in the summertime the temperatures can climb up to above zero degrees C, um, even reaching somewhere in the region of 5 and 10 degrees Celsius. So that means there's a lot of snow melt, ice melt, and there'll be some streams um, being produced, and we know where there's water, there's life. So this is the place to find terrestrial life on Antarctica. The winter temperatures um, drop to below minus 50 degrees Celsius. In terms of precipitation, well that will fall as snow, and there's very little snow falling here. When it does fall, the snow doesn't melt. Instead, it sublimes. So it changes from a solid state to a gaseous state. So that means very little moisture, or no moisture at all, for the biological life. So life depends on the temperatures climbing above zero degrees Celsius during the summer months. Winds are more extreme during the winter time, where they can blow at greater than 180 kilometers per hour and that causes 
basically a sandblasting effect down on the valley floor as the particles of sand are whipped up and basically um, hurled down the valley. So the dry valleys are an incredibly special area. So much so that they've been designated as an asthma, which means it's an Antarctic specially managed area. And um, it's very important that we follow a very strict environmental code um, within these dry valleys. And that code dictates exactly what you do. It controls where you go, how you get there, how you carry out daily activities, what kind of sampling you can do, and what kind of samples you might be allowed to take out of that environment. So all strictly controlled, and I've got some information if you'd like to have a, a closer look at that. Okay, so this is the last slide. A um, little photograph here of Scott Base, and there's certainly some web links so you can have a, a closer look at Scott Base. Um, that supports anywhere up to 80 scientists during the summer seasons. You know where the Taylor Valley is now in relation to Ross Island. So it's given you a clear idea of where you're going and a little bit about the environment in which you could be exposed to when you're visiting um, the visitor centre in Taylor Valley.